So hello everyone, welcome to a very small pack video. And it's small because Nala and Nancy are in the house in season. Kevin's in the house. Finn has gone off walking with Flynn and Phoebe, Pumpkin, Aria and Echo have gone. Um, Dudley and Raven were invited but they decided they were mummies boy and girl and came back. Wait, wait. Ready? Wait, Dudley, sit. Sit. Good, wait. Ready? Rave. Raven, you're spoiling the picture. Raven. Sit. Wait. Ready? I'm going to throw it. Woo! wouldn't normally. Good boy, Lanny. Reward Katniss for the lazy sit like that. Um, there's a show coming up and they do a good citizen award, like bronze award, like then it's first come, first serve. So I'm planning to do Lanny and probably do Pod as well. Um, even though Pod could probably skip bronze and silver and go straight to gold, but they're only doing bronze there, so we'll do bronze. Um, but yeah, like every, I can't seem to get temperament out of my head at the minute because I just am seeing so many poor ones. And I think that's why I can't seem to get it out of my head. You know, like there's people going on about separation anxiety. And it's like, well, what were the parents like? There's a fair chance there's separation anxiety somewhere in those lines. And then your puppy was born with a predisposition to separation anxiety. Now, it's also, that's also a huge management thing and how you treated the puppy when you've had it and how it's been brought up with you. So it's not just a sort of genetic thing, if you like, but if you have never left the puppy and then suddenly you went from never leaving the puppy to leaving the puppy for you know nine ten hours a day yeah of course it's got separation anxiety so you know some of it is management my treat pouch got soaked yesterday so some really soggy treats that are just gone to mush so i'm just gradually throwing them out and then the dogs find them um you know, and everything, temperament comes back to everything. Because with a poor temperament, you have to manage, micromanage yours and your dog's lives to make things better, easier to limit damage. You know, like I've heard of dogs with separation anxieties uh, jump through windows. They had to have stitches when they could kill themselves doing that. Um, you know, they chew sofas. Um, ingest the stuffing of the sofa, need emergency surgery. Again, that's something that could kill them. Um, you know, if they broke out of your house or your garden because they're so stressed at being left, then they could get into trouble with that. Like, you know, so you have to micromanage. If you've got a reactive dog, you've got to micromanage so it doesn't end up in fights or biting the wrong dog person, killing a dog, um, hurting a person. Like There's so many things that can go wrong with dogs that come down to temperament. And I just don't feel like enough people are making enough choices with temperament at the forefront, in my opinion anyway. Obviously everything said on here is my opinion. And you may agree, you may disagree, but a good temperament to me is far more important than any ribbon because I live with my dogs 24 seven. They're in the ring for five minutes and my dogs live in the house all together as a pack, as a group, and we have a lovely life. We do mixed groups and there aren't 
other than when girls are in season there is never groups that we can't do so it's not like say it's never Jude can't walk with Nala and Pod can't walk with Finnick or there's never anything like that sorry about the wind noise it's just picking up you know we could just go for a walk don't have to think about the groups because different certain dogs don't get along at all like which is really important when you live in a group of dogs with a group of dogs and if you've got poor temperaments everything's got to be managed and at some point management can does and will fail and when it can does and will fail either your dog's gonna get hurt you're gonna get hurt or another dog's gonna get hurt or maybe your house will get hurt you know it's never gonna be good is it so when you're breeding a litter try and do your homework about temperaments when you're buying a puppy do your homework don't try do your homework on temperaments and look at the family line don't just look at mum and go oh mum's lovely mum's a family pet um but never goes anywhere um she's lovely she's fine look at dad look at relatives if mum's had another litter look at the puppies she's already bred look at the litters dad's already sired and bred you know real really do your homework because you're gonna have to live with the consequence of your decision of the dog you buy for the next hopefully 12 to 14 years um so it's a really important decision and you know it could save you thousands of pounds in vet bills and household repairs in the future <laughs> as well so you know a nervous temperament like that's the other thing is how do these owners not understand or see the dogs showing signs of stress and worry and nerves you know like pod for example this year at crafts got really worried on the floor in i've never seen him like that before or since and he'd shown a crafts the year before without a problem hi hi enough enough raven why are you wound up that was a bit of rough play more than anything all calm now um so anyway yeah he's shown a crafts the year before without a problem he's done two shows lka show and shows which are at the nec without a problem went to crafts this year not didn't like the floor worried about on it scared of it i nearly didn't take him in but i logic and thought that he'd actually be better he'd find it better on the carpet than just the floor and he generally did but he just didn't have enough time on the carpet to calm himself down oh there's angel um before like he actually had to perform and move which is a pity but anyway what i'm saying is i was so aware the pod was scared that day and worried that day and i nearly pulled him out of crafts the biggest dog show in the world that you know we qualified for i paid 35 pound to enter i got up at four o'clock in the morning to drive to i bathed him the day before i you know he's in wearing brand new fleece brand new collars new bandanas the hair and had worn like you know crafts is always a big deal is what i'm trying to say and i still nearly pulled him up because he wasn't happy and if he was still not happy in that ring i would have pulled him out mid-class you know so people need to advocate for their dogs and understand and see that stress and i just don't understand when people don't see it you know and pod won't get to go on that floor and again until crafts itself next year because lka's moved to a different venue um but again i'm gonna take him 
and I'm going to give him plenty of time on that flooring before his class and then make the decision and if he goes there and he decides he's worried he's scared he doesn't like it he won't go in his class because it's just not fair to push him like dogs just want to please us dogs live to please humans and if he's struggling to please me because he's frightened and worried of the flooring then i gotta just go okay i trust you i understand you don't like it won't force you, it won't push you. You know? And I just think more people need to do that. But again, it does all come down to temperament because Pod's got a really solid temperament and it was testament to his temperament how well he got over the issues he was having in his class. Because if you'd have seen him walking to go into that ring, you wouldn't believe just how well he got over it in the ring um but the fact that he's got such a solid temperament and that he has that history of with me that he trusts me trusts my judgment that he even was trying to walk over that floor because he didn't want to he was worried he was that scared he didn't really want to but he trusted me enough to attempt it trusted me enough to try and settle in the class as best as he could but that's the that's the one and only time I've ever seen Pod frightened so you know and he still stood still to let the judge go over him he still was carrying his tail he was still taking treats you know he got over that because if he was that stressed he wouldn't have eaten treats and he wouldn't have carried his tail. He would have dropped his tail or tucked his tail. So, um, yeah, like, they're an animal as, as well. Like, every animal can and does get frightened at some point. The fact that Pod had shown at the NEC three times before without an issue, and the fourth time had an issue, he's an animal. He's a dog. You know, he can change things can change something spooked him and that's how he responded so anyway i'm gonna leave this here and see you all soon bye